the Grand National. Hobby industry consultant Rich Palmer came up with his greatest contribution to slot cars in 1961, in-store racing championships. Throughout the summer, he conducted six weekly races featuring Aurora cars exclusively. As part of his routine, he sent a newsletter to Aurora headquarters. Silverstein paged through one of Palmer's newsletters one day and caught the mention of the Aurora races. He sent his assistant, Shirley Henschel, to Palmer's store on a fact-finding mission, and her first visit paid two dividends. First, she convinced Look Magazine to do a story on slot car races, July 3, 1962. More important, Silverstein used Palmer's event as inspiration for Aurora's own series of sponsored hobby shop races. He hired Palmer as a consultant for $50 a month, enough to pay for your hockey tickets, said Silverstein, and began planning what would become the Grand National. Starting in October 1961, Palmer and four other retailers conducted test competitions. The following month, Palmer took several Aurora cars modified by his most successful racers and showed them on the Today Show. NBC's John Chancellor maneuvered the cars around the road in model railroad course with only one train collision. Following the success of the trial races, Aurora announced plans for a national racing program. Silverstein declared, I think we're on to something big. He traveled to Detroit to enlist Ford Motor Cop Corporation as a co-sponsor. This was a hard sell because not only did I want to use their name, I wanted 100000 a year from them. He spent the day being passed from one department to another. Advertising, marketing, youth division, public relations. Finally, they sat me down and said they have a guy coming in. So he walked in, put his feet on the desk and said, All right, talk for five minutes. Silverstein pitched, and the Ford executive smiled. I love it. It's a go. The guy with his feet on the desk, Lee Iacocca, father of the Ford Mustang and the Ford Aurora Grand National. Silverstein instructed Palmer and Schwarzschild to design a program the average shopkeeper could run without undue disruption to store routine. The result was a nine-week series requiring only two hours a week. Palmer designed a standard race course with one long straightaway and a three-curve backstretch. The design rewarded kids who could soup up their cars and those who could steer through tight curves. Palmer named it the Mille Mazzaglia after the famous Italian thousand-mile auto race. Aware that summer months are traditionally slow for hobby retailers, Aurora scheduled races for June and July. Race packets included a rule book, two trophies, window streamers, pennants, Ford 406 decals, which racers were required to stick on their cars, score sheets, and model motor and club cards. Although Aurora later claimed that 5,000 stores took part in the Grand National, Palmer estimated the actual number at 500. Still, the Grand National was the most innovative store promotion to date. Aurora kept the competition keen, and because of their deep-pocketed sponsor, it remained exclusively Ford. Only five cars could be used. The Galaxy 500 Sunliner, Galaxy 500 Club Victoria, Country Squire Station Wagon, Ford F100 Pickup, and the police car 1548-1552. through 1552. As it turned out, the Sunliner Convertible was the most successful racer because of its low center of gravity. Race contestants could tune the vibrator motor. Two local celebrity witnesses certified the official time. 48 state winners were called from all store winners. Eight regional competitions determined the eight finalists who went to New York. Toots Shores Restaurant in New York City hosted the preliminary finals on August 20, 1962. It included three races, a 40-foot drag strip, 20% of the total point value, twisting rally course with one full stop, 30%, and the milli course, 50%. The leader after one day of competition was Henry Harnish, the teen who began his career by winning at Palmer's store. Palmer declared Harnish had received no favors. This kid has nerves of steel, explained Palmer. While the pressure got to other racers, 
Harness hands were rock solid. The final race was featured on the next morning's Today Show. Young Henry dominated, lapping the other three finalists in a 20-lap milli race. Ford offered a new 1962 Thunderbird as a grand prize, or a rain check for one when Henry turned 21. Henry's father took the T-Bird on the spot. Aurora slot cars were becoming part of the American toy buying consciousness, and the best was yet to come. And this ends Chapter 1. Next episode, we will begin Chapter 2, Thunderjets, The New Generation.